Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Better. All right. Um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it worked earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so I am an immigrant. Um, I am from Mexico. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Thank you. Um, so I, I am a storyteller, and I, I, I want to share something with you that happened to me um, back, uh, God, almost 22 years ago when I was three years old. Um, I crossed the border with my mom and my one-year-old sister. And if, if the policies that were in that are in place today um, we're back then. Um, I don't. I don't know where I'd be right now. I don't know what would be of my life. I don't know what would be of my mother's life. Um, my mom told me that she she came here because she thought that I might be gay and that being gay in Mexico was not the best thing. Um, and so she made the de decision to bring me here just in case. Um, so this is the story of how we crossed the border called a mile in my shoe. I remember walking across the border when I was three years old. My mom, my one-year-old sister, and I walked together with a group of people across the desert. We had to walk through a drainage tunnel near a gas station somewhere in the dark of night in the brush, followed by the sounds of nine animals. My mom was excited to bring us to see my dad after a year here on his own and wanted to make sure we looked our best. So she bought us those little light up shoes that everyone is going crazy for kids in the 90s to light up when you walk. Um, well, the shoes were super useful in, in that drainage tunnel to light up the way for everyone crawling through their hands, through on their hands and knees. But once we were outside of it at night in the desert, they were a dead giveaway. So the coyotes, the people that helped us cross, asked that we take them off once we got out of the tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, now sitting at a gas station nearby was a border patrol vehicle and we had to walk right in front of it. Immediately, everybody scrambled, um, and started crawling on their hands and knees behind tall grass. Uh, but my mom didn't want me and my little sister uh, walking on barefoot on the dry, hard uh, gravel full of prickles. So she stood up. She picked my sister and I up in her, in her arms. And at first, I thought she was giving up because we would surely be seen. Um, and to be honest, I wasn't really even sure what I was scared of because I was three years old. But she stood up tall and she walked with a defiant pep in her step. And that's when I realized she hadn't given up. She just had faith and resolve to overcome and that we would be okay. She that, she, that we would find somewhere where our fa family could live and thrive. She taught me that night that the real meaning of courage is not to pretend to be immune from fear, because none of us are, but rather to take action in spite of it. Now some might caricature little three-year-old uh, me as a toddler, criminal, murderer, rapist in the making. <laughs> But alas, my sister and I grew up and went to college, and in 2015, I became student body president of MSU Denver. My name is Christian, named after Jesus, follower of Christ, and I wouldn't work for the Colorado Immigrant Rights Coalition, nor would I have ever been student body president without the conviction of my mom. She's the real dreamer here. I think about her sacrifices daily. Her manual labor eats away at her body for the sake of my future and for the sake of this country's future. My mom is why I am here today, and I will refuse to apologize for my mother's struggle to feed and clothe her children and help put my sister and I through college. Uh, studying to go to med school 
Um, but after the election of the most anti-immigrant candidate in history, um, I found that I was standing on unstable ground to pursue my dream. I thought about it, um, and I couldn't stand the thought of going home one day and finding my nine-year-old sister alone in an empty house because I had dragged my mother away. I'm here to, today showing you what an, uh, uh, what an unseparated family is capable of. All of our immigrants' communities and the crowd and our allies, we know the resilience and the work ethic our communities possess. I stand before you today, and I dare Congress to be as courageous as my mom was that fateful night, crossing the dark, cold, de cold desert with two toddlers in her arms. It shouldn't be this hard. My mom's been on that waiting list since 1999, and that waiting list is still on 1996. My mom, my sister, and I, we pay local taxes, we pay state taxes, we pay federal taxes, we pay into Medicaid, we pay into Medicare, into Social Security, it, into programs that we're never going to be eligible for. That means we're, we're helping take care of our nation's children and our nation's senior citizens. And, to, and yet somehow this president labels us a burden.